Hello everyone. Today we are going to talk about the min-max loss function. This loss function belongs to a family of neural networks called generative adversarial networks, also known as GANs. And before we deep dive into the loss function, let's take a quick overview of how GANs look like. So GANs are comprised of two different components, the discriminator and the generator. What the generator does is it takes noise as input and then it generates a fake sample. Let's say we're talking about images, so a generator generates a fake image. And then what the discriminator has to do is it has to distinguish between the real and fake samples. And depending on the outcome of the discriminators, both components are then fine-tuned. And, well, when you think of it, both of these components compete one with another. We want the generator to be good enough to make really good fake samples such that they will fool the discriminator. And we want the discriminator to be able to, again, distinguish between these really good samples and the real samples. So they compete one with another. Uh, before we go to the next slide, I just want to mention that the discriminator, let's say it takes some instance, um, either real or fake as input, what it outputs is some number between zero and one, which is actually a probability, where one indicates that the discriminator thinks that this instance is real and zero is that it thinks that it's fake. Okay, now let's take a look at the objective function for the discriminator. So again, this is the objective function for the discriminator. Uh, we'll see in, a, in, in just a minute that we want to maximize it. So first of all, we see that there are two components for the discriminator. The expectation value over here followed by x for the first term and z for the second term, well, that indicates that over here we are looking at instances taken from the real data distribution. And over here we're taking a look at instances taken from the noisy distribution of some Latin space. Okay, so if we take a look at what's inside the bracket over here regarding the real values, well, when we think of it, we want the discriminator for the real values to output one because, well, we want it to know that it's a real sample. And if we plot the log function of d of x as opposed to d of x, which this value ranges between, again, zero and one, then the function looks like this. Well, the log can technically go above one, but we're only interested in values between zero and one. And we can see that the maximum value over here is when d of x is equal to one. Again, that's why we want to maximize it. If we take a look at the second term over here, then, well, this is these are instances that are generated by the generator, and we want the discriminator to be able to tell that they are fake, meaning we want the output over here to be zero. And again, let's plot the function 1 minus d of g of z as opposed to well, d of g of z, where this ranges between 0 and 1. If we plot this function, then it looks like this. And we can see again that the maximum value over here is when, well, this is equal to zero. So regarding the discriminator, we want to maximize these two terms. Now, let's take a look at the objective function regarding the generator. Well, the generator only takes part in this part uh, or in this term regarding the two terms. So, well, that's in the next slide. Regarding the generator, we want to minimize the objective function because we're looking at fake instances that the generator, well, generates from the Latin space. And then regarding, again, the generator, we want the discriminator to output one so that it would be fooled. And again, if we plot that function again, we would see that as closer that it gets to one and the smaller the value is. And that is why we want to minimize this term regarding the generator. And well, 
when you think of it, that's it. That is the min max locks function. It's written this way, where again, we want to maximize it for the discriminator and minimize it for the generator. So thank you for watching this video. I hope it was helpful in making you understand the min max loss function. Uh, let me know in the comments below if you'd like me to make a video on, well, anything else.